Welcome back once again to Legacy here on the Boss and Roll stream. This is day two of Gen Con. So the way Gen Con works, if you haven't been following along with the rest of these videos, is that all of these events are four rounds. If you go 3-1 or better, you qualify for the format championship at the end of the week. And it's day two. I qualified for Vintage and Legacy on day one. So this is all a free roll. So I get to have some fun with wild decks. And I have a wild one for you today. So this, you see a lot of familiar legacy cards like Goblin Lackey and Goblin Matron, Warchief Ringleader, like these cards are regular Goblin cards. But this deck is not doing the normal thing that Goblins does. You, what you won't see in this deck is Aether Vial, Wasteland, Rashad and Port. That's not what we're about here. This deck is about slamming Mux's Goblin Grandy onto the stack. So... It, it, it plays kind of like a, a stompy slash show and tell. Like the 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 point is that if Muxus resolves, we should win. Like that's what this deck is trying to do. So we're trying to get it down as early as possible, as fast as possible, and re as reliably as possible. So this list was developed by Caleb Durward. Uh, he uh, big streamer. If you're not familiar with his work, uh, awesome content. Go check it out. But uh, he built this as a thought experiment to uh, what about what if we just maximize Muxus? Because it's been pretty normal in Goblins now to still have your Aether Vials and your Wastelands and stuff, and you play like two Muxus at the top of your curve. But Caleb was like, what if we just play four and we power it out as quickly as possible? What would that look like? And Caleb four owed his Gen Con Legacy Pod yesterday with this 75. So clearly it's got some chops, and I'm excited to try it. On the Eternal Glory podcast, uh, that is a podcast that I co-host, we talk about legacy. My co-host Bryant Cook has been talking for weeks about how goblin players don't really, like, experiment enough. Like, they, they, tr they shift some slots around inside their basic shell, and is there something different? Is there something bigger? Is there some different iteration of goblins that abuses the new cards better. And I think Caleb Durward might have found it here. So what we're trying to do, uh, we have Cavern of Souls to make sure Muxus resolves, Ancient Tomb and Chrome Mox to get it out quickly, four Lackey and three Warren Instigator. So we have seven Lackey effects, uh, several ways to cheat on mana. Goblin Warchief reduces the cost too. So th this is all about making Muxus happen. And then when Muxus does trigger, if you hit any of the Haste Granters, so there's three Chieftain, four War Chief, and a Krenko, you can tap Krenko right away. That gives you a, a bunch more Goblin Tokens. Uh, the four Skirk Prospectors generate mana. Prospector plus Krenko. You can tap Krenko for eight mana sometimes, effectively, which could lead to casting a second Muxus, and then you do it all again. Like uh, I was goldfishing this deck earlier today, and... There was a time I put most of my deck into play on turn 3, and then attacked for something like 300. So this definitely has some explosive combo potential, and I'm excited to try it out. I hope we get to mux this a lot of people tonight. <laughs> this is a delightful card to shove onto this deck if you haven't lived yet and done that. So hopefully we get to do a lot of that, and hopefully on turn 3 as reliably as possible. Let's go throw goblins at people. Alright, so it's go time. We're here. We're playing with the Yorion deck. I'm going to keep this hand. We're on the draw. This hand is a lot better on the play. But I'm going to keep it. We have a turn one Lackey. And if we find a land, the Chromox and have a turn two Warchief. Oh, Jesus, by you. Oh, no. <laughs> That's bad news. We're against some sort of Yorion Nick fit. This is the type of deck that we should be able to just dumpster with our combo plan. But this Lackey's going to have to get through first. I hope they don't Cabal Therapy naming Goblin War Chief. Oh my god. I should probably play my Chrome Mox this turn. Just to make sure that doesn't happen to me. Normally I would slow roll this, because I'm not using the mana right now, but if they have Cabal Therapy and they get to 3 for 1 me, with Chrome Mox still in my hand, that's going to be just a nightmare. I 
good news is that they do that. I get to search my deck for a bunch of lands and cast Cranko on turn two. Uh, I guess I could cast Cranko now, but I'd rather wait a turn on that. I don't think I want to attack. I can attack with just Warchief. Or I could attack with both and get through for two damage. But I really don't want to ramp them. Like my plan is to ramp. I don't want to let them catch up. Oh no, I'm not getting decayed. Yep, alright. Ah, what a stupid card to play against in the first round. I was so excited to have Goblin Lacky in my hand. Bold, huh? All right. That does very little against my deck. It is a 3-3, three, three, though, so damn. All right, so I could Matron for something, or I could just uh, slam Cranko. I could also play Warchief and set up for a Cranko next turn. Yeah, Cranko with Haste is pretty nice. Still no attacks. So what am I looking for here? Uh, having Matron now means that if I draw Muxus or um, Stark Prospector, I can Matron for the other half of the combo, and with Cranko just make a shill of the mana and cast Muxus. That's, there, there will be a tipping point where I can just mash through this Explorer and Leovold, and I don't care what they do. But we just have to get to that point before they're stable and can answer all my stuff. Oh no, this is another Decay. Get out of here with that, you're an 80 card deck, why do you have so many good cards? Alright, there's Tavern. So now we can shove Cranko into play fearlessly. They can still remove it, but they can't counter it, so that's a start. Can't abrupt decay this one. Unfortunately, it doesn't have haste right now. This is Uro. Oko. Come on. <laughs> Their deck has so many good cards in it. Alright, Lackey. So I think I want a Matron for Muxus. I guess I should get Ringleader, actually. Because that requires less to go right and does a similar thing. Goblin Ringleader, yeah. Like, Muxus is fine if I draw a land, Ringleader is fine if I don't. I should have attacked with Cranko there. No, they still have the, the Explorer. They're down to two cards in hand, though. We just gotta. Drain them out. Uh, they could put Yorion in hand this turn if they have nothing else going on. Raska, the Golgari Queen. God, she can kill my Chromox. Yep, there it is. That's alright, I have another one. I 
don't think I'm going to need a Goblin Lackey this game. The first one was so good. Alright, show me the Muxus. Uh, Lackey and Matron. <laughs> awesome. Alright, Matron gives us a path at least. So I could attack. If they chump with Veteran Explorer, I guess that's fine. Because they can sack Veteran Explorer to Vraska anyway. Yeah, I'll just attack Vraska. They get to block, but I get two mountains as well. And that sets me up for Muxus. Okay. They would rather throw away a land than get two lands in this spot. That's, that's good to know. Yeah, so Vraska can plus, draw a card, gain a life, sacrifice veteran explorer. Oh no, don't draw spells. Oh god, they get to strip my matron here. And my chieftain. They can sack the explorer to strip my chieftain too. They've done pretty well with having their answers line up to my threats in their 80 card deck here. And they're going to have uh, plague engineers after board if they don't have them in the main already. Just, that's just a pretty obvious black card to have in Legacy these days. Well, they're sacking lands instead of Veteran Explorer. This is really interesting. They seem to think they can win an attrition game against me. Maybe they can, I don't know, but... Okay, uh, now I'm going to lose the Chieftain. But I'm going to top deck Muxus, so it doesn't matter. Uh, yes, absolutely I would. Yuck, they got another way to draw a card. So they can put Yorion in hand and then have it for next turn. Draw two more off the Strix and the Astrolabe. So it's time to top deck Muxus. I'll take that. Alright, we have a Prospector in here. Prospector, Matron, Chieftain. So, it would cost kind of a lot of resources to get this Matron this turn. Ah, oh, shit. I shouldn't have done that. They can just kill it with Vraska now. Uh, so, one, two, three. I think I should cast Matron, actually. Put them on now or never to have a Cabal Therapy. There he is. One, two, three, four, five. Don't have enough to do it now. If only this Cranko was a Cranko. Alright, let's fade. Discard spell. So they can... They get to redraw with Yorian, but that won't happen until their end step. 
they can redraw with Raska now. They have two unknowns and Yorion in hand. I guess they could have like Pernicious Deed in their deck. Though they have a lot of permanents for Pernicious Deed to be a card you, you'd really want. Deed and uh, Yorion are a non-bow. Because Yorion just wants a bunch of permanents around. I have to assume they have all eight Strixes in the deck. Blue decks with all their cards. <laughs> this Braska has been so good. Not normally seen in Legacy, more of a pioneer card, but she has done work. Fuck. That's alright, I play four. Let's top deck another one. And here comes Yorion to draw two cards. And also just be a giant body. Well, Therapy is a good card. Alright, deck, mucks us off the top. Let's do it. I would also accept Ringleader. Uh, War Chief's pretty good. I'll play that first, because that makes it so I can empty the rest of my hand. Alright, so they have this 4 5 in play. That's stupid. <laughs> Fuck four or fives. That's so big. And if I'm not attacking with this board, I'm probably not winning this game. I would have shoved all my three threes into this board if Yoran wasn't there. Alright, yeah, now I'm just gonna F6 and hope for Moxus off the top at any point. We're just somehow not dead yet, even though we are pretty dead. Yorian can attack, I think. Yep, there it comes. Strix is getting rowdy too. That makes sense. That takes the turn off the clock. Moxus. Shit. I'm not going to play that. Uh, I want them to... Maybe I can bait them into playing the Cabal Therapy. God, it's so embarrassing to be losing to Nick, but... <laughs> it's every card that casts is so good. Except this one. But I guess even that one kept me from really attacking in the early game. Yeah, come on, deck. Mucks us off the top. Oh 
Oh no. They're probably not drawing Moxus. They have the, the Fate Seal now. Left it on top. It's bad news. Uh, four, five, six. Alright, I will give this one more chance. If they Jace, bottom, and then my top card is Muxus, maybe I can still win. So, now my goblins don't have haste and they cost more though. They left it on top. That probably means we're dead. Okay. Okay. Alright, so what is my sideboard here? Uh, Chain Whirler and Sharpshooter are both interesting. They have a bunch of Strixes and shit. I don't think Pyrokinesis matters. Pyroblast is good. Yeah, the rest of these cards, not so much. So... What are the cuts? Uh, probably an Instigator. The removal is pretty good, so let's go a little lower on that. And this, how can I beat a plague engineer? Is pyrokinesis the only way I have to do that? I don't want to be just like lights out, pants down to that card, but uh, I guess I have this lord. I could bring in another Lord to go with these three. Uh, Sharpshooter can also combo kill my opponent with uh, Prospector. Right, I'm off Chain Whirler, back on Sharpshooter. Thrashmaster costs a lot though, it costs a lot more than the card it's trying to answer, which is usually a bad deal. Uh, Cranko's good. Inc oh, I have Incinerator, if I can get some X2 goblins into play. Alright, maybe these Instigators just have to go, and we're in Lackey Town. Right, what else do you even cut? You could cut a Chrome Mox. Cranko is kind of my plan. I could also just bring in three cards. Alright, I'm doing that. Come on, turn one lackey. Alright, we have turn one lackey. We don't have any follow-up mana, so this has to be good. Alright, don't have anything. No! Alright, that's fine. This will force the block and unlock our lands. As far as shitty things go, this wasn't that bad. So we get to turn to this Cranko. Can't decay that one. I think Cranko is the better turn to than Ringleader, because Ringleader has haste, and I don't need to refill just yet. All right, they had the force for that. Sucks. I'm gonna ring leader. Okay, that was good. Goblin. So, ring leader. 
All right, yeah, that's fine. Ringleader gives away perfect information for Cabal Therapy, which I'm not excited about. I'm just going to ram into this thing and try to get my hand into play. I have a lot of basic lands to search for, too. I can't not be attacking when I could be attacking, if that makes any sense, with this goblin deck. So they saw a Prospector off of Ringleader, unfortunately, so if they therapy, they're going to get a bonus one they didn't know about. Jace. This is an aggressive Jace. Uh, I'm gonna push for the max here, even though it's a little bit greedy because it means they can counter my chieftain. Alright, so attack Jace. And Jace and my opponent and my opponent. I think I could have gotten away with attacking Jace with just one thing, because then, like they, they're still they still want to block Lackey the most. I think. It's kind of a, a weird spot there. I'm going to play one of the Prospectors, but not the other. Because that'll play around the Cabal Therapy, like they don't get a, a freebie. And they don't know about the other one. And I want to leave something in the tank for post-Wrath. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can Mux this next turn. Because Matron costs two. One, two, three. Yeah, I can mux this next turn if, if my board isn't just Wrath right now. Alright, that's fine. Eternal Witness. Okie dokie. Getting back Brainstorm. Alright, yeah, they are looking for that uh, Plague Engineer pretty hard. Okay, so Mog War Marshal is a functional Dark Ritual with uh, War Chief and Prospector. If they have a force, they have to force this one. Alright, it's Mux's time. Alright, one, two, three, four. I need one more mana. That's a pretty good mana to get. Replaces itself. All right, let's see if the theory holds that Muxus ends the game. Right, what do 
we hit. Certainly looks like a lot of damage. Alright, so they block, block. They have to block Muxus, because he's going to be a thousand thousand. And next biggest thing is a four. Yeah, they're mega dead if they don't have some extra help, and probably dead anyway. We got something. So, like, Abrupt Decay on one of the Lords would take some of the sting out of this attack. Uh, that was the wrong one. Uh, they needed to go after one of my plus one plus one Lords. Yeah, these give haste and plus one plus one. That one just gave haste. Like, now that we're in combat, this is the one that matters. Attack with all creatures. Smash. Mox's trigger. Alright, that game felt more reasonable. But they drew some weird cards like Eternal Witness and Assassin's Trophy instead of exclusively perfect cards. Uh, I now that I've seen Eternal Witness plus the eight Strixes, this this chain world keeps looking better and better. Yeah, my opponent confirming in the chat they forgot that Chieftain gives haste, and they thought they could just stop the attack by hitting this one. Wrong. So, is Chain Whirl Whirler actually something I want? It does nip Planeswalkers too, and they play a bunch of those, but I actually, I don't think I want to do that. They've also shown me a bunch of Abrupt Decays and Trophies, so bringing in Chalice to like try to cut off their options doesn't even seem worth doing. Yeah, I'm just gonna submit this deck as is. God, Chain Whirl is so tempting though. I have the Sharpshooter that does mostly the same thing, but having two copies of that. But the question is, where would I find it? I think I would have to cut the Pyrokinesis for it, but I need that for the Plague Engineer. Alright, this is the deck. Let's just like turn three Moxes. Uh, this has a lot of potential. This is the most explosive hand I've had. This is this is a turn three Moxes, I believe. I guess they probably blind name Lackey would be my guess. Yeah, they named Lackey. I don't have one of those. Goblin. Prospector. Alright, so next turn I matron, I get Moxis, and then land, pop goblin, pop goblin is six mana. So this is a turn three Moxis if we're unmolested. However, this does curve perfectly into getting blown out by. Plague Engineer. Oh no, do they have another therapy? Damn it. Alright, I've lost my matron. But I drew Marshall, so we're still on board. I have more matrons and muxies. Alright, here's this. I 
I guess I could have played Chieftain right now. I'm just going to hope that their 80 card deck doesn't have the turn 3 Plague Engineer. Like, I could have sacked these to make Chieftain. Alright, looks like we dodged. Then once the Chieftain's in play, I care a lot less about Engineer. Though I'm always just, like, in abrupt decay away from losing my, my Chief and my board. Oh, okay. Didn't need that anymore. It does turn me off if I top deck Muxus. I'm not going to pay the price. The troll toll. Right, it's time to go. So now we're ready for uh, an engineer. Like, all my goblins will survive as one ones, and I have the incinerator. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I can actually just, if I just shit out my hand, they're dead on board if they have nothing. But that that's a pretty high risk play. Hopefully I draw something I'm more willing to attack with than Jump Home Incinerator. I'm probably going to play Prospector pre-combat, attack with everything, and I can incinerate a, uh, a Strix that comes down. I don't even care about a Strix. Like, they don't have the... or I, I don't care about Coatl. Alright, Veteran Explorer, I'll attack into that. Oh, okay. They're just doing that. They know about the incinerator, don't they? Yeah, they know about incinerator. They don't know about prospector. And we are set up for Muxus off the top. I guess if they therapy incinerator and then play... Engineer, that's a pretty sweet little maneuver. Yep, there goes the incinerator. Scavenging ooze, that's fucking big. Alright, we need Muxus or Ringleader or Matron right now. They are on their last card though, but they have Yorion in two. Ooh, what do you do? So, Prospector. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I can put them to one. So, if I put them to one. I lose a Chieftain, and they can gain a bunch of life next turn, too. Yeah, that's not good enough. I think it's better to have this material in play. Just gotta hope the last two cards in their hand aren't just great. And again, the blue deck delivering. So uh, in, in these standoffs, the blue deck can draw cards like Brainstorm, and I just have to hope the top of my deck is a card that matters. Alright, if they're just like randomly eating creatures on their main phase, I suspect their hand isn't super great. Uh, come on, Muxus or Ringleader, Matron. Have so many good draws. I think uh, Four Marshall might even like get it done. <laughs> oh my God, that's literally the worst draw I could imagine. 
Alright, they showed me that their hand doesn't do anything, though. Oh, shit. They have an abrupt decay. Okay. Alright, so they might be Brainstorm locked here. Because these are the two cards they put back with Brainstorm. What the fuck is this? Nissa Vital Force? Uh, untap a land, return a permanent from your graveyard to your hand. Alright, so they have a 4 4, or a 5 5 haste to land. And that's forever. Like, that is not a, a temporary thing. Okay, they're trying to get this game done. Can I please just draw one of my sweet reload cards? Jesus Christ. Alright. Uh, oh, until end of turn. I thought that was permanent. Yeah, good luck with that! I didn't even want those cards, idiot. <laughs> The chosen card is Kuromox. Yeah, they know how to... Yeah, uh, that was pretty clear. It was just the, uh, what in, would it be in my hand that I didn't shove into play yet? And the only answer is Kuromox. Oh, no. Now I'm going to get Fate Sealed. Please bottom it. Bottom it. Ugh. Just slowly dying here. We had so many looks at so many draws. Okay, these are both attacking. Alright, just the one is attacking. Ugh. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to run a runner off the top. Like, we know this one's bad. <laughs> LOL. So... I can't even attack. Like, I could attack and suicide, attack and kill Jace, but then I die on the backswing. They have to plus Jace, bottom a card, and there be another good card under it. Uh, they left it on top. It's probably the fourth Chrome Mox, let's be real here. So close. We had them at one, effectively. wonder if there was a damage I missed anywhere. They left that on top. Rightfully so. It doesn't do anything. So, I could attack with one creature. So I can pressure Jace a little bit, just in case we do end up in a place where they have to bottom bottom. Oh, did they draw Plague Engineer for the Rubbins? Oh, Dead of Winter. Alright, so that kills all my things and none of yours. Alright. Ah. That was frustrating. We had so... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so... If they hadn't top-decked Dead of Winter right there, 
They would have bottomed Muxus. We draw Ringleader. We cast Ringleader, who draws these three cards. Uh, I'm at one, two, three, four. One, two. Ah, jeez. That was so close. But that was why you put Brainstorm in your deck. Uh, we, we got to a point where neither of us were really doing anything, and a good top deck either way would break it open. They cast Brainstorm, and I drew three Chromoxes in a row. Frustrating, but that's magic. I chose to register Basic Mountain and Legacy. Alright, so we're here in round two. We're on the draw, and we have a pretty, like, turbo Muxus. We have, like, a turn four uncounterable Muxus, a turn two uncounterable Cranko. Oh, I guess we need another red card to do that. I'm going to keep this just on the uh, the strength of this is a Muxus deck. Let's jam Muxus. Like, obviously, I'd want some early interaction or some earlier plays, but let's let's see where this goes. I guess I should have played Cavern there in case I draw a red card for the turn 2 Cranko with Cavern. I can, I can still play turn 2 Cranko, but they can counter it. Mountain Go is pretty suspicious. I wonder, my opponent probably thinks I'm unburn. Oh, they're a Rashad and Port deck. Is this lands? I can't think of very many decks that would have Misty Rainforest and Rashad and Port in them. Yeah, this has to be just actual factual lands. So I'm going to get ported here. That slows me down a bit, but I'm glad I didn't play Cavern now. <laughs> the re Cranko. Okay, so next turn I can cast Cranko even if they port me. Just gotta hope I get that far. One, two, three, four, five. The problem is if I go for the turn three Cranko, then I don't have turn four Muxus anymore because then they can port the Ancient Tomb. It might not matter. We might just be dying to a 2020 right away. Ringleader. Is that better or worse than Cranko? I think Cranko is better. No, that's not true. I think Ringleader is better. Because loading up with other plays, uh, if they port this Ancient Tomb, seems a lot better. Ooh, four for four. Let's hope they don't Merit Lage this turn. If they give us even one or two turns to figure this out, we're going to be doing it. Oh no, they have crop rotation. So we are like just dead here. I guess we'll see if I this deck is capable of exploding hard enough. So let's Jesus, they have Wasteland too. Alright, yeah, this draw from them was absolutely perfect. So they can make Dark Depths, port me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just so dead here. Yeah, we kept a kind of a slow clunker. Uh, certainly can't be mad about that. Alright, so Blood Moon is coming in. I probably want Chalice. That'll shut off crop rotation and all of that shit. 
Uh, Lackey is probably, like the Lackeys in general, are, this is the best they're going to be. Jump Home Incinerator is not going to do much here. Uh, Cranko is kind of a shitter. Uh, I want the rest of this stuff, so I've got to find a cut somewhere. I don't have a Sting Scourger or anything. kind of awkward to have Lackey and Chalice in the deck, but I have a bunch of caverns, so it's probably fine. Right, maybe War and Instigator, or War Marshal is probably worse than Instigator here. War Marshal is not the kind of card you want against the, the combo deck. I want to combo them. Yeah, I'll keep this. Turn one Chalice. That should mess with their Explorations and Crop Rotations pretty well. Well, let's hope that does anything, because Lance is a deck that can also play Chalice. So they have hands that don't care, they also have hands that are just going to collapse to this. Oh. So, I think I want to play War Cheap this turn. Because then even if they port me next turn, I can still cast my stuff. And the Instigator will have Haste next turn, so with the double strike, the first strike can put in Goblin Matron, and the second strike can put in Muxus. <laughs> Let's hope that all works out. Oh, Tabernacle, that's a bitch. We should be able to present lethal here, even through the tabernacle. <laughs> Pow! Nope. Zero off of that. Okay, so... I'll be able to tap Cranko to make a ton of goblins, and then Skirk Prospector can pay for the, all the tabernacle triggers. Alright, easy game. Let's do that again. I don't think... Anything's really going to change about my sideboarding. I'm not sure if I want the chalice on the draw, but I guess the uh, crop rotation is still an issue. It won't stop exploration, but it'll get the other thing. Alright, let's do that again. Lock and load the Muxus cannon. Alright, we have turn two chalice. Not exciting. This hand actually sucks a lot. It doesn't do anything. This hand is exciting. Alright, so I'm going to keep this and bottom, I think, Chieftain. Maybe I should have bottomed Ancient Tomb. They're going to loam these back up. That was a good start. So they have one card in their hand that's not a land. Right, let's draw a red card. 
Okay. We're in business. Chrome Mox. Exile. Lackey. Chrome Mox. Exile. War Chief. And then all in on War and Instigator. I'm not sure if I even wanted to play that land, but if they use their land drop wastelanding me instead of dealing with War and Instigator, I'm gonna win. Alright, that was a really bad dredge of Loam. So they have Loam, Land, and one Unknown in their hand. And I'm gonna Muxus them this turn if they don't kill this Instigator. Oh no, what is this card you're playing? Oh, are you just maximizing your loam, I hope? Just getting all three cards back. Please don't have abrupt decay. Fuck. Okay. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. They still have that one unknown card in hand. Alright, don't slow roll me. Let me get into combat and attack you. I guess they could crop rotate for Mazavith here. Okay, there's that. Alright, so their hand is three lands. Which, I mean, is a little scary, but also largely whatever. So I could get Muxus and hope I draw a, a mana source, but that also gets crushed if they uh, loam into a wasteland. I think I should get uh, Ringleader. So I can Ringleader with a land off the top even if they wasteland me. Alright, they have a shot in port. And they do have Punishing Fire in the deck. That card is optional these days. I really wish my deck had Wasteland in it now. So they're going to port Ancient Tomb. I hope to draw a land here. Uh, hmm. That's not really what I want. If I could do it for two, that would be really exciting. But I cannot, alas. So I guess the question is, do I do it for one? Or do I save it up to do it for two? Because that'll turn off Punishing Fire and Loam. Alright, yeah, I think I just have to sit on it. That sucks. I mean, Blood Moon's also a pretty great draw. We've got some live ones in the deck. The way they've played this game, though, if I can Chalice on two, their hand is just lands. They're all in on this loam. Come on, deck. Give me some mana. All right, I take. I'll take it. I'm gonna chalice this turn, and then I can goblin next turn. I gotta get them off this nice little loam loop they have going.
Okay, time for them to take natural draws, and hopefully they don't draw. <laughs> there, I mean, nice. That chalice was right on time. They would have had Punishing Fire set up this turn. And now they can port two lands, though, so uh, I still need to draw a land to get this goblin going. But any goblin that costs uh, less than four or land is a good draw here, so there are not many bad draws in the deck. about that land. Uh, Alright. That's a play. And I can use uh, this Skirk Prospector to cash in next turn. Uh, cash in these goblins for mana. Like, I could Ringleader now, but I don't think that's actually worth doing. Like, next turn, they can port my two lands, and then I can sack the Matron to Ringleader if I don't draw a land. Yuck. Oh, they lost the gamble! Ha ha ha! 20 percenter. Wrecked. So now their hand is four lands. I think they're all fetch lands, too. That was unlucky, but I'll take it. I needed a little break. All right, now let's, let's punish. Let's actually deliver on this reprieve we've been given. We can start to pull ahead now. We're attacking for real chunks of damage. It's not just one anymore, now it's four. And I'm not going to sack any goblins to cast any spells this turn. I guess if they draw like Tabernacle or Crop Rotation for Tabernacle, that would slow me down a lot. But I would still just like pay for all my things and attack. And they're on a pretty short clock. They're on a three turn clock under that circumstance. And I can add the second Warren Instigator to the board. Uh, Alright, Muxus is the only legend in my deck. That's okay. And that was the card they drew, too. I, I, the three cards in their hand are all fetch lands. Right, ringleader, uh, what does Matron do? I don't think I can give... Yeah, I think I just want to ringlead again. If I could give War an Instigator haste, but that would cost me too much of my board to do. I think just continuing to add pressure. Alright, so next turn War an Instigator can have haste. Alright, they're dead next turn. They have to figure it out right now. Their hand is three lands. They can't loam. They can't punishing fire. Just 
did I, did I miss something here? So, no. Uh, I was trying to think if... No, Sharpshooter's not in the deck. I was trying to think if there was a way I could have burned them out there, but Sharpshooter is A, not sideboarded in, and B, no, I don't have enough goblins or mana to do that. So, I'm all the way off that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Did our chalice carry the day? Or are we going to have victory snatched? Or <laughs> defeat snatched from the jaws of victory? All right, and we won. That uh, gamble, that 20% that percenter that they lost, uh, that, that was the game. We managed to navigate that one slow and steady. All right, goblins, you're on a redemption arc. Let's let's keep it going. All right, we're here for round three. We were playing against Ryan Glacken again. Uh, we played against him in the vintage prelim yesterday. I don't know what he plays in Legacy, uh, but I know that our hand is not keepable, basically no matter what our opponent is doing. Um, This one... I will keep this. And hope that they're, he is not on a prison deck. Or a, any deck with discard spells, pretty much. Yikes. So I'm going to bottom Cranko. Yeah, this has Lackey Muxus. Being on the draw is kind of lame, but can't help that. Chalice on one, Chalice on one. Alright, there's Chalice on one. So I can't play Lackey now, but that, that could have been worse. So now I can exile the Lackey to Chrome Mox. I wonder if this is just Eldrazi, or if he's up to something more interesting than that. Alright, Matron was literally the best draw. Alright, Lackey can FOH. Not sure what I get here, with my mana situation being what it is. I can't get any ones because they'll just get countered. Uh, I could get Incinerator, but I'm not going to be big enough. Could just get War Marshal. If he is, uh, Eldrazi, that might buy a lot of time. My hand is full of juice otherwise. Yeah, somehow I think that War Marshal is just the right call here. <laughs> yeah, he thought I was playing Sharks. That's a reasonable guess. Let's see what this is. Is he a red deck? Or is he Eldrazi? No matter what he is, I hope we draw a land. Just any land will do. Oh, it's a Karn deck. Alright, so I'd very, very, very much... Oh shit, he can just blow up my Chrome Box. That sucks. Oh, he doesn't even have to, it's just off. Wow. Now I need a mountain real bad. Mountain or cavern. That is neither of those things. So, if he has a third ancient tomb, we're dead. We can just uh, wish for Mycosynth Lattice. Oh, wow, Chromox is so bad against Karn. Oh no, yep, we're dead. I guess... 
I can't concede here. He goes to 10 from tapping the Ancient Tombs. Oh no, he can plus and make Lattice a 6-6 six, six after that, so yeah, it just did. Wow, that was a beating. Ah, <laughs> shit. Alright, Trash Master's definitely coming in. Blood Moon's coming in. Crater Maker's coming in. Uh, I don't think any of the rest of these. But none of this other stuff does anything. Alright, so... Franco seems a little clumsy for this matchup. I want Max Lackeys on the play. And even though Chromox gets punked so hard by Karn, I think I still need them in the deck. Maybe I go one less, but I still need some number because I just don't have enough lands to do what I'm trying to do without them. Uh, maybe War Marshal is a little slow. The War Marshal combos really well with Trash Master. Yeah, so like there's two aspects. Uh, I, I guess I don't really know what he's up to. I only saw Karn and Chalice. Like it could be an Eldrazi deck, could just be some sort of artifact prison deck. Hard to say. Alright, I, I guess War Marshal is my last card that I would want in the deck right now. Could cut a War Chief instead. Nah. On the play, let's try to explode. Okay. His deck is probably not very good at answering a turn one lackey. It, I, I, I guess he would need, like, uh, Dismember or Walking Ballista for one, like off of Assault Land. Let's hope to connect with a lackey for the first time in 10 years. Oh god, Mountain? Do you have Lightning Bolt in your Chalice of the Void deck? Let's draw Muxus and just go. Bummer. All right. I think I put in War Chief. Yeah, so I put in War Chief, and then I cast Matron second main. Matron can get Moxus. Yeah, it's possible Matron's just supposed to get a uh, Trash Master there, but I'm here to fuck. God, I hope he doesn't have the Pyroclasm in his deck. Wow, that would be a disaster. He's quite a ways away from a Fiery Confluence. I guess not really. He has, like, Chrome Mox, Ancient Tomb, but that didn't happen. Okay, let's see if I can uh, bring the Ruckus here. I'm going to play this War and Instigator with haste. Ooh. I'm not sure if that does anything. But I was certainly excited to draw it. I'm just overextending even more into Electricery. <laughs> I really just think he has nothing. But here they come.
So the first trigger is going to put Moxus in. Because Moxus can hit Ringleader and refill my hand for these other goblins. Okay. Boring. Alright, so if I had cast Skirk Prospector uh, first main, then I could have floated red here. And uh, fizzled the, the Bone Crusher. Either way, we're getting a Muxus. Alright, so... I want Ringleader to happen first, so I have more information with my Matron. Oh, that was not very good. Uh, I think Matron should just get Trash Master, probably. Though, I am kind of low on gas here. I could just get Cranko. And make millions of goblins. Yeah, I'm gonna get Cranko. Oh, almost cast the wrong goblin. That would have been disastrous. Yeah, Cranko costs two right now, so that's a, a price I'm willing to pay. We gotta fade the fiery confluence. All right, we did it. Actually, confluence wouldn't even really do it because Muxus survives that, and then we cast War Chief attack for uh, seven. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he did not do anything that game. Do I want Sharpshooter to be able to like tutor up a way to pressure Karn? That might be something, or I might be thinking too hard. Like, what do I cut for that if I do it? Like, I don't really need to burn him out through a uh, ensnaring bridge because Trash Master has that covered. Alright, yeah, I'm just gonna try to go fast again. Hopefully his deck doesn't do anything again, that was great. Uh, this hand is going nowhere fast. This is a mulligan. Like, he could have chalices on the play, so, like, that's not not a safe place to be. Alright, I like this. I'll keep this and put uh, War Marshal on the bottom. So I can Lackey into Instigator. And by into, I mean, like, cast it on turn two. Like, the Lackey would probably just put in Trash Master. But this is pretty real pressure, all things considered. Like, what, what my deck is capable of. Chalice would be a beating. Oh, Chrome Mox. Pitching Legion War Boss. So he's going to cast something that's better than Legion War Boss, or something that is Legion War Boss, basically. Yeah, alright. Yeah, Rebel Master basically is War Boss. That's very good against Goblin Lackey, too. Uh, that's an interesting draw. Yeah, 
right? I basically have to just, like, overload this Rebel Master somehow. Unless he has another creature or removal spell, he can't really attack with Rebel Master, because then Lackey gets to come in. Or an Instigator having Double Strike is sweet. I can just eat Goblin Tokens in combat. And if I cast War and Instigator, curve into Chieftain or Trash Master, then it's big enough to, to fuck with basically everything. Oh no. That's real bad. Yeah, this is a pretty good start on the play. Just uh, two of the... Just a bunch of creatures. The creatures are what matter against my deck. Alright, I'm, I'm not going to block. Just take my medicine. Does Matron help me? Matron could get Incinerator, but I don't think that's important. kind of wish I had that Sharpshooter in my deck now. Alright, so all of his goblins have to attack. So, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I think I'm just dead. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so dead. As the 3-drop tribal, he is a better goblin deck than I am today. Fairly confident I have no ads here. Can I even survive this combat? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. At yeah, 9, 10, 11. I would have to block both of the Rabble Masters, and then I just have nothing. Okay, yeah, I'm dead. He exacted his revenge from yesterday, just being a better Goblin Stompy deck than I was. Yeah, this deck is definitely built to just beat up on slow blue decks. Uh, playing against getting stomped like that, no good. Uh, though him winning the die roll was also pretty enormous in that matchup. Oh well. Live and die by the Ancient Tomb. We're back for the final round. Try to salvage this even record, 2-2. Two and two. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. It's not really explosive, but it is rock solid. Like, the caverns are going to make sure my stuff resolves. Uh, War and Instigator for the, the poke poke with Matron into Muxus is pretty nice. Uh, they're going to need a, a removal spell or to kill me outright. <laughs> but it, they could be Storm. I hope they're just some dirtily blue deck that gets dunked on by War and Instigator right now. Even if they have the Swords of Plowshares or whatever, uh, this hand is, is pretty good. I can have Cranko next turn. I'm just going to be throwing bangers onto the stack until they die. And I just hope they're not Storm. I don't know. They might be Storm. Oh, they're ninjas. Okay. That is fine. <laughs> so
So I think I want to pre-combat the Chieftain to uh, force as much damage as possible. Oh no, Ornithopter. That means they can block and still uh, get some ninjas in onto the board next turn. Oh, maybe I ring later. I'm just trying to think, is there any world where I can get them to block with both things or neither thing? Oh, this can't block, so they have to block with Ornithopter regardless. So I think I want to get Chieftain into play so I can uh, Cranko next turn with haste. Alright, so we're going to eat this Ornithopter here, or they're just going to get wrecked. Oh my god. They didn't block. Okay, um... So let's put Matron in. Get Moxis, and then put Moxis in. Hope to see some fireworks here. Alright, I hit another Matron. So I'm gonna get a uh, Jump Home Incinerator with this Matron. Unfortunately, I don't have the mana. I didn't hit a uh, Prospector. I'm not sure how bad this could actually get for me. Like, they can put Yuriko into play and, and draw a card, basically, but then they just get mushed by goblins. What does this card even do? Like, I know what the card does, but what does it do for this deck? Is there a combo I don't know about? Uh, this is just draw a card, right? Whenever a ninja you control. Okay, so they draw two, and then they get crushed by goblins. Yeah, they are just dead on board. I cycle incinerator, kill ornithopter, and this is beyond lethal damage. Actually, I think casting Cranko does way more damage than cycling Incinerator, so... Alright, easy game. Alright, Pyroblast. I don't know about Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter is good before they start ninjutsuing, but it's bad after. Chain Whirler? Nah. I don't think I want that kind of stuff. Crater Maker might be good, though. So... I definitely want these cards. So where are the cuts? Uh, Instigator just exploded that game, but I think it's cuttable. Uh, Krenko's a little slow. And... God, I just want every card in my deck all the time. Why can't sideboards just be, like, totally free? Just... I guess I could just add the cards and play 64 or whatever, but that's not a good plan. Uh, this deck doesn't really block anyway. But this is like the Dark Ritual with Skirk Prospector, so I don't want to cut my explosive things. But I think I do want the Crater Maker. Like, I do want all of the answers that I have in the deck. 
No, that's not even true, because, like, one pyrokinesis answers several things. This is a tough call. Alright, maybe one less War Marshal. Okay, let's do it like this. Uh, turn one, double lackey. Ornithopter would actually be kind of a beating against this draw. I gotta say, it's a lot of fun uh, playing this mono red deck, being able to just F6, just pass priority in my opponent's turn, don't have to bluff a force of will or anything, just what I got is what I got. Shit. Let's go to this war marshal. We can do our build our own war and instigator. This is actually better than war and instigator having two separate bodies to get through this uh, zero two. So they can ninja this thing and then replay it as a blocker, but the ninja will be tapped, and I'll get at least one lackey trigger. And I can play chieftain, which forces uh, gets an actual. Uh, chump out of the Ornithopter instead of just a, a block. Little textless Ornithopter. Textless, artless Ornithopter. So if they have Fatal Push or something, I at least want to make this a little more difficult on them. Push that pre-combat damage. Yeah, you better block. And do they have to push? Yes. Wow, look at this art. These these Gen Con God accounts have been a lot of fun for just getting nutso art. Everybody just has the, the coolest versions of every card that they want. Well, this, uh, this Brainstorm... I guess this Fatal Push and Brainstorm are both box toppers from Double Masters. Alright, so if they don't get something good going right now, I can Matron for Muxus and then Lackey next turn. Depending on what they do, uh, we'll determine if I Matron for this Ringleader and try to play it safe, grind them out. Yuriko. Okay, so Lackey is not going to connect anyway. Ooh. That's a shame. Yeah, if I had another red card, that would be the nuts, but unfortunately it is not. But hardcast Yuriko is not what any opponent wants to do. Yeah, so I'm going to get Ringleader. Or maybe Cranko is the, the get here. Yeah. My creatures all have haste. This is uh two free damage. Like they if they have a removal spell and then also attack, then that's fine. They get to draw a card and deal me some damage. And I can pyrokinesis if there's an emergency. But mostly that was just two free damage. Play a second year ago. Uh oh. Good thing I have this pyrokinesis and this lord. I would like to draw a red card. Ooh. Alright. I'm not gonna block. They get to sneak one in there on me. 
Uh, they revealed Force of Will. Oh no, that was like the best card they could reveal. Both It means that A, they have Force of Will now, and B, they dealt me five. Just kidding, nice Force of Will. The Force is going to be pretty good against this Pyrokinesis, though, unfortunately. Uh, so, I could? No. There's nothing I want to do here. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to pass. And hope that they can't kill Goblin Chieftain, because that's going to take my whole board with it. I will still have a Choo Choo Cranko, even if they can kill Chieftain. There's that Retrofitter Foundry again. What a strange inclusion to have in this deck. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Does this deck fall into, like, holding patterns where it needs a giant mana sink like that? Time to get cranky. Alright, um, I guess I will demand that they have this force of will now. Which I know they do. It's a shame I didn't have one more actual mana to. Alright. Force pitching Oko. So if I crank up here, so if I just fire in with all all of these, uh, one two, they take nine, and I just lose a bunch of goblins. I I think they are just dead next turn if I don't attack with everything. Uh, I can attack with a bunch of them. I want to put damage on them in case they do draw an answer to Chieftain, which wraths me. I did not have a lethal attack there. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 3 blockers, yeah. I didn't have a lethal attack. But I can put him dead next to him. Just gotta fade. One more. Hopefully they don't combo out with Retrofit or Foundry. Whatever that means. Whatever that looks like. I truly don't understand why that card is there. Alright, so they're gonna get a Yuriko trigger off of this. And I'm gonna chump the other one. Tropical Island, probably not what they were looking for. At least I hope not. Oh no, don't have another one? Okay. Oh no, that's so bad. That turns Chieftain into an Elk, which kills all my... Wait, why? Why aren't my things dead? Is this a Layers thing? What's happening? Yeah, I, I'm actually a little surprised by that, but we're going to win the game. Here comes the Ruckus. My opponent is probably looking up the ruling right now. Okay, so the opponent conceded uh, 
because, I mean, nothing we can do about that bug. But that is, in fact, a bug. That is not a layer situation. Uh, I, I, in the Discord chat with the uh, Gen Con judges right now, and I guess I'm not the first person to report a bug with uh, Goblin Chieftain and Oko today. So that is a bug that should have worked. I should have been left with a uh, 2-2 Cranko and a 3-3 Chieftain and nothing else. So a little bit of an awkward end. Uh, there would have been a little more game to play there. Like I still had draws. I still had a uh, board presence. But yeah, that, that was not how we wanted to end that. But we did get a win, whatever that means. Uh, so I, I'm going to wrap up all the same. I'm not going to lie. I did not like playing this deck. Uh, there was not a whole lot of agency uh, in the early turns. It was like, here's my hand. Do I want to mulligan for something better or not? Where it was like the decision point. And that if your opponent gives you time to set up or like does their hand doesn't line up right, you get some cool thing. You get to do some cool things. But in general, I would rather be on the uh, brainstorm side of the matchup than the Chrome Mock side of the matchup anytime. But it was a fun foray into doing something totally different. I played Hogak earlier today in the, the Vintage preliminary as well. So I did two things that are totally out of my wheelhouse. Uh, figured now's the time to get this content out because of the, uh, the Gen Con God accounts. <laughs> I will never have four Muxes again in my life. This card is like $100 if you can even find it because of the way... Uh, uh, Jumpstart has been distributed on Magic Online, so that is what it is, and uh, I'm glad we got this opportunity to play some goblins, and thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.